This video is sponsored by DisabilityQuotes.com. They have been helping residents and also practicing physicians find the right type of disability insurance for the past 20 years. This is a type of insurance that ensures that your income continues in the event that you cannot continue practicing medicine. It's important. So important that I personally have disability insurance. Click on the link below in the description for a free quote from them today. So today we're going into the uh, cadaver lab. I am going actually going with the uh, neurosurgery department of neurosurgeons to do some uh, cadaver training. Uh, basically doing a procedure called a lift anterior lumbar interbody fusion, which we make a cut on the um, inferior portion of the belly. Go in, move out the move the vessels out of the way your aorta and IVC, and then put a plate a cage and some and some screws in the back of the spine to uh, fuse their spine for all different types of reasons. So this is what we're I'm doing today, hanging out with the neurosurgeons and doing this, and then the rest of the day is uh, some research and studying. Here we go. You guys want to do one more kilo and then flip it over? We have, we have an hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Zeem Solo FD, it's a compact C arm. Mm -hmm. um, it has a monitor built onto the C arm itself. Uh, the number one thing about this particular C arm is the flat panel. Mm -hmm right here and with this it uses less radiation to get a better image uh, for you during surgery cases. So you can adjust how much uh, radiation exposure? And... Yeah just generally just because of that flat panel you're going to have less uh, radiation um, during your procedure to you the patient uh, everybody in the OR. So I'm just now leaving the cadaver lab uh, learned a lot today especially Working with the neurosurgeons, um, check out my other video about neurosurgery versus spine surgery, orthopedic spine surgery, and I'll put that right up here. But basically, in the program here, there is some between the neurosurgeons and orthopedic spine surgeons, or people who are going into spine surgery, such as myself. Uh, so I went and hung out with them today, went into the lab, they had a lecture this morning, and basically it's uh, two different procedures that we were going over and practicing on cadavers. Uh, we use cadavers, people who have donated their body to medicine, to science, and because it's just like a, or the closest that you can get to a actual person and the makeshift surgery is being in a cadaver lab. So whenever there's opportunity to practice on a cadaver or look at the anatomy, study the anatomy, it's that's probably that's one of the things you don't want to turn up, especially as uh, uh, being a surgery resident, future surgeon. Uh, if you ever have opportunity to do that, I would suggest get in on that. So today, neurosurgery, and then I was there from orthopedic spine for from an orthopedic spine perspective, uh, just trying to learn new techniques, see how the neurosurgeons do certain things because there are different ways that the neurosurgeons approach a particular case versus the orthopedic spine surgeons and um, just to um, pick up on new techniques, surgical techniques and exposures and learn, look at the anatomy a little bit closer. So a lot of fun today. The rest of my day is spent doing research. I have an abstract that I have to submit to an article, to a journal to this afternoon. It's due today, so I'm gonna get that done. And I have another article that needs to be written for another journal that I just got emailed last night from one of our spine surgeons here. So. Lots of research today. I have to do some studying as well. Every day I try to do questions, practice questions. There's Q banks that we have for orthopedic surgery. Every year we take a orthopedic in training examination. It's eight hours and it prepares us, it prepares you for your actual board exam 
after your fifth year residency, you take that board exam, and that's when you become board certified. So in November of every year, every orthopedic surgery resident in the U.S. takes this exam on the, usually the same day. Like I said, it's eight hours, and you have to prepare for it throughout the year. So even though you're busy, you may be working 60, 80 hours a week, sometimes a little bit more on trauma or any other particular service, you still have to come home and study. So I tried to do a minimum of uh, 25 questions per day, and I just figured that out because I said I want to do 6,000 questions by the time the exam gets here. It's in six months from now, and 25 questions a day is what um, that, that number came, came out to. So research, do some study and do some questions, and I have to prepare for surgeries tomorrow. I'm on a call tomorrow from Saturday till Sunday, so uh, I need to prepare for the surgeries that are planned for tomorrow and make sure I know how to do them and re review my anatomy and all that. So, busy day, still have a lot to do, and I'm still trying to get a workout in later and um, have some uh, downtime. It's very hard to maintain work-life balance being a resident, but it is very possible. You just have to be very efficient when you're studying, when you're doing your work, when you're doing your questions. Just be very efficient. If you got 45 minutes to get the questions done, they should be done within that 45 minutes. It should not take you two hours because you don't have an extra hour, 15, 20 minutes to wait. So thank you guys for watching uh, today. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss these videos. We'll see you next time.